Naomi. How are you? How are you, my love? This is my husband. Come say hi. <laughs> Hello. Hi. I've just been setting up Zoom. I've just been rushing to get the makeup so she can make herself look more beautiful. You Even guys are more amazing. beautiful. I remember the last time you were helping her set up and everything. You guys seem well, to have then. it all together. It's very good. <laughs> Anyway, we just we, we we need cheering up by you because we've just gone into tier four, so we're a bit down. Ooh, I know. What does that mean? What does that mean? Like, uh, are they talking about lockdown? lockdown? Full lockdown, basically. Oh, just today they announced it. Yeah. Yeah. Although I can still play golf, so I don't really care about anyone. No, else. you can't. You can only play with one person, but you know. To be anyway, honest. hope it goes well. Bye. Bye. Wow. <laughs> eh? Yeah. Well, and also Merry Christmas. Just around Merry the corner. Christmas to you. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, well, this has um, knocked us all for six, I tell you, but there you go. We got to do what we got to do, I guess, right? Totally. But there's hope around the corner now. We got the vaccine and all yeah, that, so. exactly, exactly. My husband said, look, if they're going to go on a, a stricter lockdown and it means everyone can return to their lives as normal as possible quicker, yeah. let's do this. Let's do this. So... Agreed. Here we go. Have you been able to do any performances last year? Any what? Were you able to do any performances last year or this year, 2020? Only, only in August, I was able to do four social distancing gigs. Hmm. You know, and I thought, as I'm sure most people did, if this is a way forward until the vaccine comes, we'll take it. Mm -hmm. But then they started introducing other lockdowns like bars to close at 10 uh pm yeah. so how could you open nightclubs or do gigs when you know there's no, there's venues. no venues all all the promoters thought it's <laughs> and it's really it's difficult pointless i mean even for doing like a festival they had some interesting ideas of how you can have like these blocks of like tables to put people at and keep them apart but uh that's just going to be logistically I know. And, impossible. And they did that. I mean, I did some gigs where they had them in pods. Some had pods. Some had mm. social distancing tables. And the one gig that I performed at, they were... And also the other thing, Naomi, they only allowed a certain amount of people. And this gig that I did, there were only yeah. 250 people were allowed. And it was out in the open. They're not allowed to have any in indoors. Oh, no, forget that. Uh, anyway, it was out in the yeah. open, and fortunately, the day and the evening just was lovely. But, you know, the adults, they drink in, they get in drunk, the songs come on, all that goes out the window. And that's what yeah. happened. All, all that, inhibitions yeah, everybody gone. Everybody wants to dance and scream and jump on the stage. I mean, you know, when I went on and I told them, guys, you've got to move back to your tables, you know, and then like, yeah, oh, they all started walking back. And then... As soon as the everybody's free started, the, the intro, they just went off, yeah, and they all started running back. <laughs> but that and that's what you that's what you want as a performer. You want to see people going wild and enjoying the moment. And yeah, it's kinda of hard to perform for people when you have to like to be good and stay in one yeah. place, right? Yeah. But yeah. Here we are. Here we are. So there's some positives, you know, and uh yeah, what what to do? It's it's still a blow. It's still a sobering to hear your prime minister say, basically, you know, yeah. Christmas is cancelled, and you know, um, one of the the scientists said uh, the um, the virus is mutating into something even worse. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, I heard about that. I know, I know, I know, I <laughs> know. It was like. I mean, when, when, when you said that, I had an interview before yours, I couldn't even do it because it was, it was just after what he said. And I was like, and I said to Jonathan, I, my, my soul is just, I need to awaken it. You know, if I drank alcohol, I'd have had a shot of brandy, but I don't drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's probably for the best. <laughs> right now, I'll tell you, like, my weekends, I've had a little too much. Let me tell you. <laughs> drink, it out. drink one for me. Cheers to you. <laughs> On a positive note, did you discover any new hobbies or anything interesting while you've been in lockdown or throughout well, that last year? Well, you know, year? like we spoke the last time, it's just, um, you know, I've discovered running, but then, you know, we live in a cold climate, England, and 
We're now in winter and I kid you not, nearly every day it's been raining. So mm. I could run, I guess, in the rain, you know, but then I don't get sick, you know, and then, and then I've enjoyed running in the woods, but then it's muddy and I don't fall over, you know, so like mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm at home, but fortunately the gyms, <laughs> the gyms were open. So I was going to the gym or I had a personal trainer coming out here when the gyms are closed to train me at home. So that kept me, kept me going. But now the gyms are closed mm-hmm. yeah. and I can't go out running or walking, but it's raining every day. But uh, my husband said to me, look, look, we've got a spin bike in the garage. We just do spin classes to YouTube or something. You know, we always find a way you have to, you have to, otherwise. You got to be yeah. creative. Yeah. I got an elliptical now. So like, what a relief, what a relief to have something. Cause in Canada, it's already like, you know Celsius, right? It's already minus ten, minus twenty here already. Yeah, where where in Canada do you it's live cold. again? I know you told me. I can't. I can't remember. I can't remember. Um, in Western Canada, so I'm in Edmonton. Edmonton. Yeah. So Western uh, Canada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're about a six-hour drive north of the U.S. border. We're the furthest northern city with a population of over a million. All right. Yes, I remember you saying it was just a small city. So it, it it's cold. <laughs> it's cold already. Oh, There's already God. a foot of snow on the so ground. You're, so you're, you're yeah. in Edmonton, in Canada. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm going to right. look that up. I'm going to look it up because my husband was interested. And I'm like, all I can remember was she said she lives yeah. in a small city that's on the edge of somewhere in Canada. Edmonton. <laughs> I must remember Edmonton. The, the edge of civilization. The edge of civilization there. <laughs> and it's cold. <laughs> is it cold yes. right now? Like right now it is. Let me here find the temperature for you. This, ooh, ooh, it's not that bad. It's two degrees. Oh, okay. Two degrees is good this time of year. Oh, okay. Because we're okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's better, but yesterday was like minus fifteen. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And how long does it last yeah. for? So like March. March. March, maybe April. You- yeah. You know, there's a lot of good things about living in Canada, but the trade-off is this weather. Wow, wow, <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Oh my, I, have, I don't know what to say. Wow. That's okay. I'm used to it. But uh, but back in, in normal times, I like to get away every winter in January. I, I like to go somewhere tropical, but uh, and how not long, this year. How long would you go for when you go away? A week. A week. Just a, just a week. And then... And I, I try to... I try to go when it's like the worst week in Canada possible. <laughs> but yeah. What's your bucket list vacation? Like, where is your one place that you're like, oh, that you haven't been yet? Where I've been or haven't been? Yeah, haven't been. Goodness. Yet. Um, gosh. Obviously, anyway, it's sunny, you know. Um, mm-hmm. My husband and I have traveled quite a bit. Um where haven't we been yet? I, mind you, he's been saying quite a lot about, I don't know if it's sunny, it would depend on what year, in a uh, time of year we went. He'd love to go to Nashville mm. or Boston. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he'd That'd love very to. cool. Yeah, Nashville for the country music and Boston. Many, many years ago, I came, I, I traveled to Boston for some gigs when I was signed to Sony. And um, mm. they put me up in this grand hotel in Boston. And I just thought, this is like England. Yeah. Boston looked, the buildings looked like England. And then somebody said to me, yeah, it's very much like England. It wasn't like a, a, a city in America from what I was used to seeing, yeah. you know. And it was a bit chilly and I just thought it was so pretty. So Reminds you Yeah, home. yeah. It's probably because it's like the first American city, isn't it? Yeah, Pretty apparently, much. apparently. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. a story around it. I thought it was lovely. Yeah, really lovely. Yeah, I'd like to see Boston as well. Now, you've been working hard, as you do have a sing- new single we're going to play on the show. Yeah. And tell us about making it and how it all came together. Well, um, I feel it slipping away. Um, it was sent to Gary, who runs uh, Energize Records. Uh, just him and his partner um, have been running it, I think, 25, 26 years now. And, you know, we've become really good friends. I've been with them for about five or six years. 
and we're working on an album, as you know. And uh, Gary's been looking for songs for me and me, myself, and blah, blah, blah. And he sent me this track that was sent to him by Phil Harding, uh, who's a good friend of Lamont Dozier. Uh, you know, Lamont Dozier was, to me, songwriting royalty from the days of um, Dinah Ross, the Motown era. He used to write for all those artists, Dinah Ross, Stevie Wonder, Smokey Robinson, and he sent Gary this track saying, you know, for one of your artists, and Gary heard it. Gary's like, this is up Rosella Street. And this this was never released as a single. It was done as a demo. Mm -hmm. And sometime I would believe in the 70s or 80s. And when Gary sent it to me, I thought, I thought wow, Gary, we've got to do this. Because I could hear what the song could turn out to be like, you know. Um, so, yeah, so that's how that came about. And... Uh, Gary and I were like also so floored that Lamont Dozier, who I believe is now in his late seventies or so, sent a personal message when he heard that done the track saying how blessed he felt mm. that Energize had chosen that song and Rosella's chosen to sing it, and we were like, "Wow, <laughs> this is from songwriting royalty." You know, if you look up Holland and Dozier, they are the kings of songwriting from that era of the Motown legends. And uh, we feel so honored. No kidding. The song yeah. is, uh, I love it. You've got a strong chorus there. It's a very good tune. So I can't Thank wait you. to, I'm going to share it with everybody on the show and uh, get people requesting it, you know, get it out there. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank them all in advance for their support. Thank you. How was the recording process uh, doing this song when you're doing some recording from home or did you go into the studio? Well, fortunately, before we had uh, Lockdown 1, we recorded uh, quite a few tracks for the album, which included I Feel It Slipping Away. And so Gary had about all these tracks. I think we've got about 10 tracks already for the album, and we want about 12 or 15. So we've got another two more left to record. Um, obviously, we'll have to wait till this whole lockdown thing. You know? That must be anyway. frustrating because you're so <laughs> close now. <laughs> I know, but you know, Neil, I mean, we've got about 10 out there and we, they've currently been remixed and, uh, you know, turned into something um, that'll be on the album. And I Feel It Slipping Away was one of them. And we got sent about three or four mixes for I Feel It Slipping Away. And Gary and I were like, yep, yeah, this is a follow up to Magnificent, you know, which we released um, in May this year. And, and we were so fortunate enough to do a video for it because lockdown one had lifted mm -hmm. and then we were able to mix and and then lockdown two was being introduced and then ash uh, stanley who did the video called me up he's like we gotta do a video drive down to derby which like took me two and a half hours to drive down to or more nearly three hours and i left first thing in the morning it was just the three of us in the studio ash uh, myself and yolandi who helped me with the hair and makeup and i just took a whole lot of clothes from my cupboard and we just chose whatever I took wigs and you can see one of them is the red wig and and we were in the studio for about three hours just changing looks and doing this video and so I'm so so grateful that we were able to do that because we weren't able to for Magnificent mm -hmm. because that was released in the heart of the lockdown. Mm -hmm. Well yeah I'm glad there was more opportunity with this single and I mean hopefully it just gets more opportunity going forward too after this. I hope so. How I certainly hope so. Does this lockdown change your Christmas plans? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we were we were invited to some friends that literally live a five minute drive away from us, and they invited my husband and I for Christmas lunch and to spend the you know Christmas day with them. And uh, she's an excellent cook, so I was so excited, you know. Mm. And then, of course, our prime minister tells us, no, not going to mm. happen. <laughs> but bless her, she said, she said, look, I'll still cook and I'll bring it round to your house and leave it by the, by the stairs outside. And we're like, no, no, don't worry. Oh. <laughs> You're so, so lovely. But, That's you know, we, yeah, so sweet of her. But the thing is, you know, like everyone... We want to follow the government guidelines and be good citizens about it and mm -hmm. do the right thing to the best of our ability. What, uh, 
what were your top three artists that you listened to in the 90s and do you still listen to them like oh my goodness me whoa that's oh I got, well I got, um, I got some new interesting questions for you <laughs> oh that's that's a new one well today i was just listening to luther vandross mm -hmm. who i love um who else was i listening to uh, i was listening to barbara streisand mm -hmm. uh, there's so many who else from the 90s goodness me um i was listening to baby d let me be a fantasy and she's a good friend of mine that's yeah. so cool. <laughs> I like that. Uh, what would be the, uh, on a deserted island, what would album would you take with you? Or take more, take three albums with you. Yeah. Two albums, two yeah. albums. Well, one of them would have to be Luther Vandross's Greatest Hits. Nice. Right? And I'm not kidding you. I don't know who it is by, but when I have my bath, I listen to uh, bath time music and they play all these like, uh, there's this uh, killing me softly with his song. Mm. I love that song, but it's played by a a person playing a piano and the guitar. Mm. You know, so so a lot of those songs are very modern tracks, but have been done either by um, played by uh, a, a guitar or piano, and it is so beautiful and so tranquil and so comforting to the soul. Mm. So I would have to take that in. It's called bath time music. So I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Stripped down, just stripped right down to the elements. And it's the best way. I think it's a, a good way to listen, you know? Yeah, it's so beautiful. So if you can imagine, you know, I don't know, take a, a rock song, for instance. Um, you know, I can't think of one at the moment. And it's and it's just toned down and played by a beautiful guitarist or a, a, someone playing piano. And you're listening to the song and you're thinking, I know that, you know? And then the chorus might come and you go, oh, that's that song, you know? Mm -hmm. And just done so beautifully. And yeah, it just has, uh, makes me enjoy my bath even more and makes me feel more tranquil. <laughs> mm. Now, as a dance artist, you do have the opportunity to, that's really cool, to always get your songs and get different mixes of each song. Do you ever sometimes, I think that's cool because it gives new flavor to the track every time. But do you ever find that you might like the remix better than the original? Or does that happen sometimes? With my songs? Yeah, with your songs. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, coming to I Feel It Slipping Away, we've got three or four mixes of it out there. You know, the main radio edit by Tony Morkoff, the GNT mix, mm. and then there's a funky mix. And then there was one mix that I hadn't heard before, which totally threw me. It was, it's basically a cappella mm. and with just the guitar and me singing. And it just took the song to a different level and I'm thinking this is this is fantastic you know and um I shared it with my fans and they were like wow we didn't know you had this acapella mix you know which was fantastic and then um just recently um there's a, a well-respected DJ that he's based in New York his name is Mark Delang and he wanted to do a mix of I feel it slipping away so Gary sent him the vocal stems and he wanted um, the, the video as well. So he'd done his mix and it is unbelievable. And he did it to a new video as well. And it's gone straight to number one in the Kings of Spin DJ chart. And it's been chosen by the DJs. So it's not sales or anything, but I, I feel so honored, yeah. you know, that it's, it, it went straight to number one yesterday in their chart. And I'm going, okay, <laughs> this, this is nice. Awesome. <laughs> this is nice so so how one song can spin into so many different facets because of a different mix is just has always been amazing to me oh no kidding i mean and it must be exciting for you to hear it once the new product is done like i don't know i think it's from those ex most exciting feelings is when you're you're hearing something for the first time after it's been mixed and mastered yeah, it's it's wonderful. It really is. It really is. And uh, I don't know if you remember, um, I did a track called Turn on the Light, which was released 2018. Um, and we just let that run and run because it had its own kind of success. We had about 600 stations playlisted, which we thought, wow. And then Mark DeLang has said he wants to try mixing that one as well. So we might have a resurgence of that song in 2021. Who knows? Do it. Who knows? Oh. That would be yeah, beautiful. we're gonna do it, Naomi. <laughs> we're gonna do it. <laughs> do you collect memorabilia, vinyl, um, stuff like that? 
Do you have a collection of things from your oh, career? I know, obviously, yes. there's, there's wonderful photos behind you. Yes, 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 I do. Well, as you can see, the the poster over there, that's uh, that's the Everybody's Free album sleeve, mm -hmm. you know, and the other ones you can't see very well. The smaller pictures are um, when I supported Billy Ocean mm -hmm. uh, and when I supported Michael Jackson, there's the red one, that's me and MJ himself, and then there's, there's others where I'm actually on stage... Uh, doing the stadium for uh, Michael Jackson. And they were taken in such a way whereby, you know, they were zoomed in from sort of behind the crowd and to me, so I look really tiny, but what's so amazing is how many people are in the stadium. And that to me will always forevermore be a shocker, hmm. you know? So it, it brings me fast forward to what we're going through now with COVID, you know, when will we ever return to something like that? I sincerely pray and I hope we will do, mm -hmm. and we will do, but when exactly. is the question. It's a matter of when. Yeah, it's a matter of when. Where Where do you like to go? Do you still like to go out dancing? Let's pretend there's no COVID. Do you like to go out dancing? No, I used to. Not, not really anymore. I'm not, you know, um, as a performer, I go out to do my shows. And even when I do my shows now... I prefer to leave straight away and go home, mm -hmm. either come home or go to my hotel room and watch something on TV or Netflix. That's that's my party time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> relaxing and relaxing. Yeah, that's my party time. <laughs> or, you know, when, when I've done a gig, I, I just can't wait to come, come back home and go to the hotel room, have a bath, stay in the bubble bath, and what I'm going to watch on, you know, um, on, on Netflix or whatever. Um, but uh, I think... If I went out dancing, my, my favorite uh, thing would be actually to go to a private party, mm. you know, rather than to a nightclub. I think uh, I'm past the nightclub stage now. I think I was past that stage at like 22. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know, exactly. It was over very yeah. fast. <laughs> we, we, we're all grown up. That's what I'm saying. A party now with, you know, your your peers that are the same age group or whatever. Uh, um, for me, I, I find more um, more inviting. Yeah. Do you play board games or card games? Do I what? Do you play board games or card games or things like that? Uh, you know what? No, I don't. Yeah. My husband does. He's forever playing these games and he's like, uh, you know, you look up and go, I'm not ignoring you. It's all good for the brain. You know, it's keeping my brain's exercise. I'm like, yeah, you just keep playing those games. <laughs> <laughs> he's not wrong. It is. No, I don't. I might, honestly, no, my favorite pastimes is, um, watching movies or watching right now i'm watching a tv show on uh on uh um uh, prime amazon prime which is like netflix yeah but it's called it's a different kind of thing and i would heard about it when it first came out in 2018 the, the handmaid's tale yes which i, I believe was that. filmed which i was filmed in canada i believe or something like that and i've heard so. lot, yeah i've heard so much about it and i just didn't like yeah you know there's so much else to watch and i decided because uh, I went to visit some friends uh, last week um, and they're like, oh, you have to watch it. Oh, you have to watch it. I am now on season two and I've only been watching it for like four days. <laughs> <laughs> and season two, it's I don't know, I, I can't, my husband's like, you're obsessed. It is, it is like one of those, it's just shocking. It's shocking and you think it can't get any worse, but it does. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm like, I want to, I want to see this to the end. Yeah. What's my binge right now? Uh, I said that the one I just finished was The Crown on Netflix. Oh, yes. Yeah. But, and I'll watch that one straight through, like in two days. And then I have to wait a year. And then <laughs> and it's a good thing it's a story we already know, right? So you don't forget about it in a year. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh, goodness. But yeah, like uh, I understand. That's a good one. Um, Mandalorian, that's a good one. That's on that Disney channel. But uh, yeah. It's a good time to good just kick back and try to enjoy some shows while. Well, you know, yeah. at, at the moment with uh, what uh, this lockdown that we've been put through, there is no way to go now mm. unless you go grocery shopping and maybe go and browse in the shops in the grocery shops. I don't know. <laughs> I try to avoid them because that's where sometimes you run into like the worst people. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. So honestly. You want to spend a little time in the grocery shop and uh, just be at home and watch yeah. TV and make time for exercise and conversation and eat good food and just pray for this virus to disappear out of this 
world of ours. Take some vitamins and take care of your health and, exactly. and your mental health, especially. 100%. The mental health thing, believe me, you know, I think even the strongest of uh, persons mentally has been highly affected by this some way or the other because it's just like, you just want to get back to your normal life. You know what I mean? But but it is what it is, Naomi. And um, I looked up an article and I saw that every hundred years, a pandemic hits the world. Yep. We always get you know? through it. Yeah, we always get through it. Yeah, and and those people over a hundred years ago have come through because it didn't end the world then. No. <laughs> you know, humanity lived. Humanity lived on. Yeah, and uh, and you know, thank goodness for clever people out there, clever scientists. You know, bless them all for all the work that they're doing. And in a positive note too, usually there's a real huge upsurge um, after a pandemic with the Roaring Twenties. Right. You know, so right. Yeah, so everything goes really much better <laughs> after a pandemic ends. So we do have that to look forward to, I hope. Yeah, exactly, exactly. As they say, uh, how do they put it? I'm probably going to get it wrong. Uh, the storm before the calm. Yeah, yeah we'll the storm, what we're going through, and we will go through calm and thing. We're going to have such a big party. We're going to we're gonna do great. Yeah, you got to believe that. And doing stuff like this, having these chats and making a show and making music these are the things that are keeping us creative and you know it's it's good yeah it's a good time totally. to be creative. <laughs> absolutely and honestly Naomi it's one of the things that's helped to keep me going mentally is you know having had uh released Magnificent and you kindly uh you know did an interview with me then and uh you know doing an interview now and it's it's all been part and parcel of making me feel some kind of normalcy towards my career like i'm putting something out there i'm still doing something even though i'm not able to go out and perform etc cetera, etc cetera. i will take this any day and it, and it fills me with joy you know that i'm i'm doing something mm -hmm, yeah mm -hmm. and the same for you as well you interviewed me and vice versa yeah and this is going to be our one-year anniversary episode, so it's really cool to celebrate our one year with you. Wow, Thank you. that's brilliant. Cheers, cheers. I don't cheers. have anything, but you know, I got my lip gloss. I bought some lip gloss today, so cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Here's some of my water for you. But yeah, thank you again for your time, and I can't wait to share the song. Oh, my darling. It's been such a joy. I feel like you've become my best friend now. Yes, BFF. <laughs> We'll have to do this So again. we've got each other's numbers and et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> and I'm always here. And no doubt we'll be speaking in 2021 because I've got more singles coming out and the album. Oh, good. So I'll be sharing that with you. We'll, we, Jonathan and I will be tapping on your, to your door vigorously. Do it. <laughs> Our listeners will be very excited, very excited for it. So thank you, Rosala. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. My darling, thank you. Listen, have a very Merry Christmas, Naomi. Thank and you. the very best for 2021. And keep warm oh yeah in your country and i want to look up where edmonton is i'm because alan wanted to know where's edmonton yeah. so check, I'll it, tell check it. it out it's one of the biggest malls in the world yes i remember you saying that you should tell me that you should tell me that because i've already like saved <laughs> money to come to that mall there's a water <laughs> park in the mall there's a <gasps> huge ice rink in there uh, for skating and hockey of course oh, it's canada oh right but oh, and a big huge boat like the santa maria it's massive wow is it there obviously is a cinema in there as well oh yeah All, everything. oh yeah there's a theater there's an amusement park with an indoor roller coaster in it Tri triple loop roller coaster what? yeah right i'm gonna look it look up, it up. Gonna, i am gonna look it up <laughs> this is very dangerous territory for me very dangerous i'm trying to save you know you live in a... i've not been having any money thank you very much <laughs> i'll just send you the bill that's what i'll do i'll take you when you come i'll take you <laughs> to the water park and to the uh, amusement park. It and will be dangerous for both of us. Oh my gosh. They when will... you live in a climate like this, you have to have all of that indoors. Jeez, <laughs> I tell you. Oh my goodness. This is, this is dangerous. Yeah. 